Okay, everybody. Boom. Welcome. How are we doing? Uh, welcome to another awesome edition of Smart Class, keeping you smart. Uh, hello. Big shout out to all the students of the state of Piranha. Hello. I hope you are the sunshine state. Uh, bring some of that sun over here. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, we're going to be looking at a few different things today. Let's, let's do a few shout outs. Let's see everybody. Hello, Wasala. How are you doing? I uh, hope you're doing all right on this uh, on this Thursday. We're almost at Friday here. Can can feel it. It's coming. Uh, see some old faces. See some new faces. So, like I said, this is a this is a good class. This is a class for the students of the state. If you guys don't know, uh, this is the class for the students of the state of Piranha. So we're we're going to be doing a lot of shout outs to the Brazilians today, and we're going to be talking about a few things maybe about your state. So uh, maybe just to get going. Hello, everybody. Hello, Haid. Hello, Rosa. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, so welcome to the chat, everybody. If you've been here before, if you came here last week, you, you know how we do it. Uh, I've put the document that you need in the chat, and I'll do it one more time just to make sure you guys are ready to go. So please, hey, what's up, Hamza? How are you doing? Uh, so let's make one more copy of that so you guys can get that. So that's everything we're going to be working on today. And let's throw that in there right there. Long time no see, Hashim. How you doing, buddy? Good. All right. So here we go. That's it. So like I said, uh, a lot of the students we have here are from Parana, Brazil. And I don't really know a lot about Parana. Pahana, Parana. I'm not sure the pronunciation. See, I don't know anything about it. I don't even know how to pronounce it. But we're going to be talking with a little bit about you guys and, and maybe a little bit about some things which happen in your state because you guys are from all around there. So as you can see in the... Uh, oh, we got some Algerians in there. Hello there. Uh, so what you can do, take a look at here. I'm not on here. Let's. This is what I want. Boom. This is what we want. Take a look at the top here. So I got a few questions for you guys specifically who are who are from Brazil, uh, and I'd like you guys to tell me a little bit about Pahana, Parana. I'm not sure how to say it. Please tell me how to pronounce this. Number one, that's a good start. And number two, I, there, I got three questions for you that I'd I'd like to learn a little bit more about your state there. So tell me a little bit about this. So I've been looking. I've been looking at a map, and here's the map, and I'm looking at here, and you guys are all within here, and I've been to Brazil before, so I know a little bit about Brazil. I've been to a few places, uh, but I, I never went here. Be I have never been here before, and I do know Curitiba. I know Curitiba. I know Anderson Silva's from Curitiba, so that's one thing I know about Brazil, and I know you also have Iguazu, Iguazu Falls, which is just in the corner here. Yes, big shout outs to Pahana, Parana. Uh, so. I know this is a very famous place. This is a set of waterfalls, right? Uh, I think Kent is Polish too. You're right, actually. You got it. I uh, my background is uh, Polish Ukrainian, so my dad's side is Polish. Uh, good eye, good eye for nationalities there. You got it. Uh, so what I'm going to get you guys to do for you students who are from this state, please tell us a little bit about this state. What is what is great about this state? So there are three questions at the top here that I would like you guys to answer for us. Can you please educate us a little bit about what, what is there and what goes on there? So attractions, what are some things you can do there? What are some places you can go to there? What's the temperature like? Don't answer that because you're just going to make us jealous. I'll show you the temperature. What is the temperature in Vancouver today? I'm sure it's not amazing. Uh, let's see what the temperature is today. Oh yeah, six. Whew. It's hot, guys. It's really hot over here. So. Uh, I don't think someone's saying here. Emanuela is saying that Pahana is very cold. What's cold? Okay, is it is it six cold? I mean, six is not so cold. I'm from colder parts of Canada, but uh, Baye is very nice as well. But what's cold over there? What's the temperature over there? So give me some information. So when you guys got some information, just throw it into the chat. I'll pick it up and I'll throw it there, or we'll talk about it. Tell us a little bit about your state. Uh, what's a, what are some things you can do there or any interesting facts about it? If you have a great coffee, I'm a huge coffee consumer, a huge fan of coffee. So please send me coffee. I'll, I'll just throw you my email address. I'll throw you my mailing address. Please send me coffee and any chocolates. I'm, I'm cool with all that stuff. Uh, so uh, Manuelino says the temperature in Angola is 16. Okay, Angola, a little bit better than we are here. Uh, We've got a Morocco in the chat as well. All right, very nice. Okay, so what can you guys tell me? So let's start with this one here. Give me a few things that you can educate us, because it's not only me, it's not only a Canadian in this chat, there's a bunch of people from around the world here who would probably benefit from a few interesting facts about your state in Brazil. Because I think you also have uh, a very famous 
city in there, and I think it's Santa Catarina. Is that right? I hope I'm not wrong. Uh, what do we got here? No, unless I, unless I got my facts mixed up. Not too sure. Uh, what do we got here? Manuela says, now it's spring and the winter is too. Okay, so you do have cold weather in Brazil. I was kind of wondering if it's possible, but apparently you do. Uh, Paulo is also from Brazil. He says, uh, especially in Minas Gerais, uh, when the temperature hits 17 degrees. Paulo, it feels so bad for you, man. Are you okay? 17 degrees. Oh, Paulo, please, please. No, Paulo, come over here. You want to feel cold? Come over here. It's a little bit colder than that. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, anyone else with some facts about the state here? Because, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I love Brazil, and there's a good, very good possibility that I'm going to come back to Brazil and visit someday. So if you guys have any tips for me or anyone else who might be interested in checking out this place, please tell us what we can do here. Or maybe if you want to offer us a seat or, you know, a sofa in your place, we could probably come hang out there and be a, be a friend, speak English together. Amazing. be awesome. Uh, Salvador, okay, it's 28 degrees right now. All right. All right, so not getting too much, too many facts, so maybe we'll just jump into the class and we'll, we'll work on that as well. Uh, but yeah, tell us, always curious to learn about you guys, where you're from, maybe some interesting facts. So while we're doing, you know, all this English learning, tell us, tell us something interesting, maybe a little bit of a cultural fact about your, your country or your culture or anything like that. And uh, it's, cool, it's cool to share this and kind of get a different perspective on stuff. So, um, like I said, I've shared the document with you. This is what we're going to be working on today. The topic is housing. And if you've used the SMART system before, you'll know that it's all right here, ready for you, organized, and ready to go. So if you, if you want to work on certain points of grammar, we got the grammar right up there. My hand has disappeared. It's right there. Uh, tells you a little bit of everything. We're going to do some vocab building today. We're going to get you to make some sentences as per usual. A uh, little bit of speaking, a little bit of writing. So if you if you do use the SMART program, go check it out. Uh, you, there's always lots to learn on here, and there's so many different things you can do. Use of English, uh, work on your reading, work on your writing, and they give you lots of tips on that. So we're going to be working on a little bit of that today. So let's go here. Let's jump in. And let's start with the document that I've shared with you. So here's some of the vocab that we're going to be talking about today that you get from the SMART English program. Uh, so let's take a look at the first one. Let's start with number one here. And again, so you can you can really talk about this for you, uh, where you know what are, what things are important when choosing a location to live. So you have to choose a property, you have to choose a house, an apartment, whatever you're going to do. What are the important things that you're going to need when you live there? Uh, so for me, I think I think a central location uh, is good. A central location which has lots of shops. Uh, and uh, facilities nearby. For example, maybe like a gym or something like that. Um, that would be cool. Lots of coffee shops. I told you I'm uh, addicted to coffee, so that's the thing. So can you guys tell me a little bit about yourself? What's important for you guys when you're choosing a location to live? Um, is, it, you know, is it the neighborhood? Is it what the neighborhood looks like? Is it um, you know, the, the number of restaurants that are around? You want to be in a place where you can eat a lot of food. Never a bad idea, right? Or maybe some pubs, right? Maybe a few pubs nearby. So what, what would you guys say are the important things when you choose a location to live? Send me some answers. Throw them into the text. Uh, Gisem says environment. OK, Gisem, tell me a little bit more. Tell me a little bit more. What kind of environment? Um, do you want a relaxing environment? Do you want a, a lively environment? And if you say the word lively, uh, for example, I prefer a lively, and this is actually one of the words we're going to look at today. A lively environment is uh, kind of like a busy environment, lots of life, basically, right? So you can think of lively as active or busy, lots of entertainment, lots of people, sounds lively, right? So what else would you guys uh, look for in a place to live? A lively or an active environment? Um, what else? Location that's not noisy, okay, so I prefer a lively environment and a location. Okay, well, this would be the opposite, so let's put that different. Uh, I would prefer a location which is quiet mm -hmm. and maybe peaceful, right? Maybe peaceful or relaxing. Here's another word, so it's quiet. Not a lot going on. Maybe it's not a lively. It's kind of the opposite of that. Uh, let's see what else people got here. What else would you prefer? I hate crowded places, okay? And yeah, so if you hate crowded places, 
Another word for crowded that you guys can use is hectic. Sometimes it's, it's kind of the same idea. Uh, lots of people, too many people in one location. So you could say crowded, crowded or hectic. Uh, those both work. And actually, one, while we're here, uh, bustling. You might use them. This is another word we might use in English. So they're all, uh, they're all adjectives, a crowded place, a hectic place, a bustling place. So a lot of different words you can use, of course, to describe that. Uh, what else we got here? Lizbeth says, I prefer having most basic services near. Yeah, exactly. You want essential uh, basic services. So basic services. Uh, and again, uh, just, to, just to give you guys another way, um, essential services uh, is another way you could say basic as well, right? Okay, uh, nearby, awesome. All right, sounds good. What else we got here? JB says, I prefer a place with warm weather. And weather is uncountable, JB, so don't, don't use, you don't need that A for that one. You can just say warm weather, that's fine. But yeah, awesome, perfect, good. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Asala says, I hate crowded places. I love nature. Yeah, so loving, loving nature. Gr nature is great. In Vancouver, I think we have a lot of nature. You can say nature and natural surroundings. That's another, that's another way to say it. Uh, you could say that. You could also say green, green spaces. So for example, some cities have a lot of green spaces, a lot of parks and stuff like that. So, so for me, it's kind of essential. If I, if I live in a city, I don't want to live in a city just surrounded by skyscrapers. I want to live in a city with lots of green spaces, maybe some parks or just, just trees. You know, I need to see nature sometimes. Otherwise, it gets me a little, little stressed out. Uh, what else we got here? Judith, here in the USA, people are choosing uh, locations where their jobs are available. Sure, like Silicon Valley for entrepreneur, for maybe entrepreneurs and uh, engineers. Yeah, so that w I understand that as well for sure. You got sometimes you got to go where you got to work. Uh, Jazem says, and it's up to people's behaviors where I live. Okay, so maybe it depends on the personality. Uh, uh, what are what kind of characters? I mean, say characters kind of what kind of, uh, but I basically mean people live in your neighborhood. Okay, so another word you can use. Okay, cool. Very nice, guys. So let's jump in uh, to number two. Let's take a look at this one here. Uh, this one is a bit of a cultural one, right? So I live in Vancouver, and you know, some people, I'll be honest, some, some of the Brazilians kind of, or maybe even the Mexicans, they kind of complain sometimes. They think, oh, you know, the Canadians are pretty cold. And, and then some students come from, you know, another country, like, oh, yeah, Canadians are pretty warm. So I guess it kind of depends where you're from, but maybe another question might be, how friendly are you with your neighbors in Brazil? Or in your country, I'm gonna change that to in your country, not just Brazil, of course. But in your country, what do you like with your neighbors? Are you guys super friendly? Do you have close relationships? Do you spend a lot of time with each other? So we're on number two here. I'm trying to make that a little smaller. Mm -hmm. How friendly are you with your neighbors in your country? Is it different from the behavior in other countries? So maybe you've lived abroad. Maybe you've, you've, you've uh, learned English in the United States or Britain. Or maybe you lived in another country. Maybe you learned French or wherever you went. Maybe you learned another, uh, another language or you lived in another country. What can you tell us about the differences between cultures in those countries? OK, so how friendly are you with your neighbors in your country? Is it different from the behavior in other cities? So I would say, for me, in Vancouver, it's a mix. You get, you know, some people, some people I think who, some people who live in close communities, you know, maybe like a residential area, like a, a suburban area where there's a lot of people together. I think those people know each other better. Uh, but I think, you know, the people who live uh, downtown in the urban areas, I think, I think people don't talk to each other as much in the elevators. I'll be honest, I try to talk to people in the elevators, make some conversation. It's really better than saying nothing, so I'll work on that. But I think a lot of Canadians might not strike, you know, start a conversation in an elevator, this kind of thing. So I'd say Vancouver can be a mix. You meet some people who are super friendly, and you meet some people who aren't super friendly. So what about you guys? What would you say? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> OK, interesting. Uh, Igor says, once I was playing with my band in the garage, and I don't know, maybe I don't know why, but my neighbors called the police. Maybe because it was midnight. Yeah, that might be that might be the reason, Igor. Uh, rock and roll doesn't go over well at midnight. Well, it does for some people, but it doesn't for some people. So I guess that's the rule there. Know your audience. 
Uh, Manuelino says, in Brazil, uh, is so good. And Manuelino, just add that it, that it is so good. Uh, when uh, I had been here, it was so good. Okay, so maybe when you're living in Brazil, it is very good. People are very friendly with each other. Okay, awesome, cool. Any, anyone else on this? Uh, and I think we can jump to number three if no one else has an answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. Let's do, let's do one more here. Okay, here we go. Here they're coming in. JB says, I don't talk to my neighbors. Why not, JB? Why don't you go talk to your neighbors? Why don't you go bring them something and start a conversation with them? Strike up a conversation with them. Just say hello, introduce yourself. I think it's better than not saying anything, right? But I guess it depends on the situation as well. Uh, let's see here. In Turkey, we neighbors are close to each other. Okay, so again, different cultures, a little bit closer here. Uh, what else we got? Lisbeth is from Madrid in Spain, and she says, in Madrid, depending on the area, wealthy people are less able to talk to anyone. Less able, so less ability. Uh, in humbler areas, so humble, meaning when people, maybe they don't have so much money. Uh, in humbler areas, people are, so I'm just going to change that, Lisbeth, people are keen to start a conversation. Okay, so it's a little bit of who, who are you and what is your status? So that could be a thing. Uh, so here's a new word for you if you don't know this one. Sometimes it depends on your status. And status is kind of a general word. We might use it for, you know, we could use it for economic statics, status. Um, you could use that, right? You might want to use that. Or it depends on your, you know, it might depend on your community or something like that as well. OK, and let's do one more. Hello, Julian. Um, I prefer my relatives. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Prefer family first, right? And in Curitiba, they usually say that people are not very receptive, receptive like the rest of Brazil. That's interesting. Why do you think that is, Gabriela? Why do you feel like um, why do you feel like Curitiba in Parana would be an exception? Why do you think it's different than the rest? That's kind of interesting. I guess there's always one place, and who knows why? Who knows why that happens? Uh, uh, Ione? I'm not sure how to say that name. Sorry about that. Uh, but the Brazilian people are very familiar. I don't know if I would use this word familiar. Familiar means like I know something. I think I know what you mean. I think I know what you're saying. I'm, you might just want to use the word friendly or personable. Um, you might say it like this. Brazilians are very... You might say... I might use this word as well. Bra Brazilians are definitely sociable people, right? Very sociable, friendly. And uh, maybe personable, maybe you can uh, you can connect to them very easily. That might be right. I I've heard I've heard that I've heard a story that if you're a Brazilian and you go into the elevator, and if you meet that person, I guess what is it one or two times, you're automatically best friends with that person. Maybe that's not totally true, but it sounds kind of nice, right? You're kind of just like, oh hey man, what's up? Yeah, I don't remember you from the other day. Boom, automatically you're you got a new friend, right? So that sounds cool. That's why I like Brazilian culture. It's very nice. You guys are very warm and friendly. Uh, so let's do one more. Okay, so Gabriela uh, said, said the same thing, right? She said Brazilians usually say that Cur Curitibanos are uh, more closed, okay? And when she says closed, she means closed meaning not open. So closed might mean, um, so if you say people are closed, it's kind of not open. Uh, let's use a better way to explain it. Closed, maybe unfriendly not social okay and the opposite would be open open more friendly social uh, okay cool and I think let's jump into let's do one more and you guys can tell me your opinion about this one because this is crazy by the way in Vancouver the situation in Vancouver I don't know if you know I don't know if you've been here but everything costs a lot of money okay so let's do one more here this is literally the price that you might pay for a two-bedroom apartment in downtown Vancouver. And that's a pretty, that's the lower price. So about $600,000. You're looking at half a million dollars for a property in Vancouver. Would you pay this much? Or would you just flee and run away to another country where things are a little bit cheaper? What do you guys think about this? How much does it cost? I know places like Sao Paulo might have a lot, uh, might have some really expensive places, right? Or maybe a Rio uh, Rio. Rio de Janeiro might have some real places that cost a lot of money. What do you guys think? Uh, if you want to convert this, uh, you can just check out a currency converter. Just go like this. I'm sure you can do that. 
So let's say mm -hmm. we're, we're talking with you guys. So let's do this, the Brazilian where are we at? AI. So if we do $600,000, is that right? Okay, that's how much. That's how much you would have to pay for a property in Vancouver. Sounds great, right? You got that. You just like pull out your pocket, throw it on the table. Yeah, done. Great. So what do you guys think about that? Mm, let's see what a few people say. JB says, too expensive. I'd build a hut. Yes, JB, great idea. That's what I'm going to do too. I'm going to buy a small piece of land. I'm gonna, I won't even have a hut. I think I'll just have a cardboard box because the piece of land in Vancouver will probably still cost me, I don't know, $100,000. So I'm just going to have a box or maybe one of those train cars, you know, where they have, where they do their shipping containers. Some people make some pretty nice ones out of that. Uh, what else we got here? Paulo says, it's true. Uh, when I have the opportunity to talk with different people around the world, it is difficult to take a long answer for them. Yep. Uh, Julian says, I honestly don't know, but if I was rich, then yes. I guess it depends if you like it here. The, the, thing, the thing you might not like about Vancouver is the fact that it's rainy a lot. But... Rain in the city means snow on the mountains. So if you've got some hobbies, you might, you might be ha pretty happy here. And the summer here is pretty awesome. Uh, anyone else? What do, we, what do we got here? Barbara says, in Casa, Casa, Casa Vel, I'm not sure if I got that right, a nice two-bedroom apartment can cost less than this, about 250,000 reais. Well, okay, well, I'm coming over. You've convinced me. Barbara, I'm going to be coming to your city and buying property there. I'd rather live in the sun anyways. I prefer the sun. I lived in Australia for three years, and it was sunny all the time. And if you're Canadian like me, and you go to a place where there's palm trees and sun every day, it's basically you're on vacation every day. So I'll come see you. Uh, keep a spot on your sofa waiting for me. I'll be there. Um, OK. All right, and I think we got here. Elizabeth is out of her mind. She says, what? That's crazy. Only two bedrooms. Yes, just you know, four, four walls and a ceiling and a floor. And that's, that costs uh, you know, $250,000 at least. I would never pay that amount of money for a tiny space. I would rather go, going, go to the outskirts. And the outskirts are the outside of the city. Uh, and have more space for less money. Ugh, you're right. Unfortunately, I work downtown, Lisbeth, so it gets a little complicated sometimes. All right, so we've done a little warm up there. We got you thinking about housing and crazy housing in Vancouver and how you'll never come to Vancouver because it's out of control. Now, I'd like you guys to click here. Please go here. And I w this will take you to the next thing we're going to do. And I want you to go to the page here where we're going to jump in and look at a little bit of vocabulary that we use uh, to talk about housing. So I'm gonna, I think we're just going to go to this list before because I, I know some people might know these words and some people might not. So I would like you guys to take a, take a few minutes and take a browse through this list. Okay, uh, Julian, we are talking about housing, buddy. Uh, we're going to be talking about housing for the rest of the class, and we're going to be looking at this vocabulary right there, uh, all about housing and different words we use to describe the inside of a house and around the house and a city. Okay? All right, so can you guys please take a look at here? There's a few here. Uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll run through a few of these as well. I think I can do that. Ooh, there's quite a few, uh, but let's, let's take a try. Okay, so advertisements, right? You find an ad, advertisements on TV, apartment you know, appliances, microwaves, uh, espresso machines. Um, what else? Uh, dishwashing machine, uh, wash, washing machine, what? a dishwasher, sorry, I'm confusing. Dishwasher, uh, washing machine, a dryer, all those things. Cable, okay, cable TV, ceiling, top of your room, ceiling. The roof, the roof is on the top of the house, and the ceiling is on the top of the room. So a little bit of confusion. I've heard that get confused before. Commercial, okay? Commercial business. I work in a commercial part of the city. Uh, lots of businesses in the area. Community, friends and family together. Neighborhoods are communities as well. A den, a den. <laughs> Why a den? A den in Vancouver is a very small room. Maybe your office. Uh, maybe it's got some windows, or maybe it doesn't. Uh, what's going on over here? Teacher, no, 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 no. You can only see, in my page, I only see this. Error. Uh oh. Okay. Well, let's see here. I'll try to make this bigger so you can follow along here. I'll put the link in there. Hopefully, you guys can see it. You guys will have to be logged in to Smart English uh, if you want to see that. Try it again. Give it a go, uh, Manuelino, and see if you can see it. I'll try to make it bigger so you can, so you can follow with us here. 
All right, so a den, a den is a very small room. It might be an office. Some people live in dens in Vancouver because it's so expensive downtown, you have no choice. And the den will probably still cost you a lot of money. Uh, deposit. When you, when you sign papers and you get a contract for a place, you got to pay a deposit. Usually here, it's like half a month's rent. So if your place is $3,000 per month, you'll probably pay $1,500 for, for your deposit. Uh, details. Important information. Dishwasher. Wash your dishes, okay? District, district is another area, right? You've got school districts, you've got entertainment districts, you've got all these different types of districts maybe in, in your city. Dryer, for drying your clothes. Electricity, need it. Entertain, entertainment, the verb and then the noun, okay? So if you live in an area, maybe you want an area which has a lot of entertainment and all that. How are we doing so far? Hopefully we're all right. I'll try to focus on, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to go past the easy ones a little bit quicker and I'm going to try to focus on the ones that might be a little bit harder. Facilities. Uh, does your, maybe you live in an apartment, does it have a lot of facilities? Uh, gym, swimming pool, um, some kind of sauna or maybe a pool table, something like that. Those could all be facilities and we usually use them. You could say facilities in a school or facilities in an apartment. Okay, so factory. Factories would be in the industrial areas of some city, right? You have a lot of big buildings where they create, I don't know, products or, you know, do some, you know, usually creating products, a factory. And the industrial areas have got a lot of factories. Features. If you have an awesome apartment or an awesome place, maybe you have a swimming pool. That is an awesome feature. And if you have a smartphone, it probably has a lot of apps and those might be features or maybe your new cell phone has got some really awesome camera on it and it, that's you know one of the features so features are the important things that something has maybe your phone or maybe your apartment or something like that okay uh, hello Karam how are you you don't have to call me sir Karam don't worry about that uh, furnished your apartment has things inside sofa uh, TV all that stuff unfurnished opposite nothing nothing inside your apartment furniture I think you guys know sofas and stuff like that so again same thing you can see those connections right when you have the the furnished is an adjective my my place is furnished or I have a lot of furniture okay so housing and again you can use housing to talk about housing in Brazil housing in Canada housing in Turkey uh, okay industrial areas right so a lot of businesses maybe again a lot of factories in one area maybe not good for living just too many businesses there all right I think I'm gonna go here so I'm gonna let you guys I'm gonna let you go through the rest because there's a lot here so I want you to think about okay yep I know that one but skip and if you guys have any questions about some of the other ones uh, lively we kind of talked about lease I had to sign a one-year lease for my apartment ask me some questions put your questions into the chat uh, Ikea, what's the question here, Julian? <laughs> uh, okay, so put some questions in the chat if you have any about the vocab. I'm just going to go through like this, and you guys tell me when if you need any answers, and I will happily answer them for you. Okay, so while we're doing that, we're going to skip ahead, and we're going to go. And here's where we're going we're to build a little bit of vocab. If you guys go back to this, so have a look at this because we're gonna we're gonna do some of that and we're gonna use these words in our sentences later, and at the same time, uh, we're story. So Judith has a question about story. So in some parts, in some places, we use stories. I think this is your question. One story, two stories. So how many stories is your building? How many stories is your building? One story, two stories, three stories, four stories. Uh, Ahmed says, how can I use housing in a sentence? Housing in Vancouver is expensive. Housing in my city is expensive. Uh, people pay a lot for housing, right, in my city. So housing is just that, that general word that we use to describe uh, having houses, you know, owning property or something like that. Just a general word for houses. So housing. Um, spacious, jizen, lots of room, lots of space. So if your house is very big, you have lots of space. If it's very small, the opposite of that uh, would be cramped. And let me write that word down for you. That's a good word. So just so you have it here, cramped would be the opposite of spacious when you don't have a lot of space. Uh, okay, anybody else? We've got a few more. Again, think about your house. Maybe think about your place where you live. Maybe you've got some questions. Maybe you're, there's that one word you, you don't really know how to say it in English. Uh, if you got some, great. All right. 
If you guys are thinking, keep going through that list, and I'm going to start going over here slowly. And here's what we're going to be looking at next. We're going to be looking at pictures of interesting houses. And this is a pretty interesting house. All right, so what I'm going to get you guys to do, now your job, and if you go back here, I'll show you where, where I'm at here. Take a look at this one here. This is what we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Now look at the following pictures below, which we will. Make some sentences describing this photo. So I would like you guys to look at the photo and say, oh, what is that? How would you explain that in English? You're gonna have to, you might have to use Google, or you might have to use me. I'm a, I'm a close second to Google. No, I'm not close. I'm anyways, I'm a second. Uh, if you have any questions about what is that, okay? So here we go. We're gonna look at that, and I'd like you guys to point out, point out some, some words that we might use to describe these things here. All right, so here we go. Here's the first one. This cool little, this cool little house. Okay, so what can you see around it? Maybe look on, uh, looking at it right there. What's that? Uh, what's that? Okay, what is this thing which I can't get my finger on right there? Okay, what are all those things? So use these things to describe anything you can see. I would like you guys to describe anything you can see going on in this this picture. The house is red. Yes, you got it, Jazam. House is red. What is the house? It's a little bit strange. It's a shoe house, and more specifically, I think it's a boot house, right? Uh, so the house is a boot. It's a little bit different from a shoe, so it's a boot. There we go. Uh, it's got a net. Yeah, what's, what is it called, this? So the, it's the thing that you use to climb up. The house is a boot. It has a rope ladder. Let me make this bigger here. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't have stairs. That would be a pretty cool house. So instead, you got to do some exercise if you want to get into this house. It has a rope ladder, something you would use there. It's a shoe-shaped shoe, shoe -shaped house. Yes, that's a tongue twister. You got me, JB. You always get me. Uh, okay. It has a strange shoestring as a decoration. Yeah, I guess I guess it is a shoestring for a decoration as well. Oh, okay. All right. You know what? You're right. You're right, Judith. I'm totally wrong. I, I thought that was a rope ladder. I thought you would actually have to climb that to get into the house, but of course I'm not paying attention. Uh, you can see the door is clearly on the side there. It's got some little windows, pretty small windows there, but a pretty interesting place. I don't know. It'd be all right. It'd be all right. It's kind of like a tree house. Uh, multicolored, yeah, and you can see it's got, it's got some. Uh, what else we got up here? Yeah, okay, it's a house. Let's go on to next one. Let's go to the next one here. This one's got a little bit more detail. This is funky. I feel like this is something you might see in Spain. If you guys have ever been to, I think it was, I think it was in Barcelona or Madrid. Uh, Elizabeth, maybe you can help me out with this. There's a lot of colors in some areas and some places in Spain, and it kind of reminds me, this kitchen is crazy, but what I'd like you guys to do, can you tell me a few of the things which you can see going on in this kitchen? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Okay, so it's a little bit crazy. I'll try to zoom in here. And please explain some of the items uh, that, yeah, so many colors. It's a bit of, it's a bit of an overload, isn't it? You're just blown away by how many colors are in here, but it's, it's not boring. I give it that. It's definitely not boring. Uh, so what would you use to describe some of the things that are in here? So try to zoom in. Try to zoom in on your photo here. And what can you see going on in here? There might be a few things that you use in your everyday. Here, here, here. It's a crammed cool place. Yeah, definitely. Definitely crammed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely like an artistic house. Or better yet, if you, if you don't know any of the items, maybe describe the house to me. Describe some of the colors in it. Describe uh, the style of it. Nice microwave, yes, great looking microwave, I agree. Full of cooking and eating utensils, awesome word, JB. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share that for everybody uh, because that is a good word that a lot of people might not even know uh, that we use to describe these things. So let me just throw that below, that'll be easier. JB, you the man. Uh, there we go. So good word here, cooking and eating utensils. So the things you use uh, and again, this is a good one as well, the surface. Uh, the, surfa the surface means the top, right? So if you have, you know, you have the sink over here, but the surface where you maybe you put your cup or you put your dishes, 
the surface is very colorful as well. And I guess you could use surface for the cupboards, you know. Uh, the surface is very colorful and all also the cupboards. Maybe I'll just add that. Cupboards. Pronunciation is cupboards. We don't really say the P, but that's kind of kind of what you would do. What else we got here? <laughs> it reminds me of sweets. Yes, you, it does remind you of sweets. I don't think you could eat any of it, but it does. Uh, spotted spotted paper towels. I didn't see that. Where are the spotted paper towels? It must be somewhere here. Yeah, I don't even know where they are, but yeah, you're probably right. So spotted like little spots everywhere. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Ah, nice word, Judith. This this house. Uh, a hoarder who has philology disorder. Mm, okay, interesting. You might have to explain that word to me. I'm not not the most wordy person. Wordy. Uh, but I like that one. This person, uh, let me grab your sentence there, Judith. That's a good one. Let's see here. So Judith says, this house, a hoarder. Uh, I'm just going to change this a little bit. Judith. The, the, this owner, or let's say the owner of the house, is a hoarder. And this is an awesome word. Uh, it means a person who keeps things, who keeps too many things. They hoard things. Like a, a squirrel. If you know a squirrel, a squirrel hoards things as well. So you could, a person who keeps too much stuff in their house is a hoarder. And it's a phil philology, philology disorder. Oh, my goodness. Okay, you'll have to explain that one to me. Um, all right, very nice. Rainbow colors. There we go. I wouldn't like to live there. Yeah, not for everybody, right? Awesome. Let's do one more. And this one. This one is Stylin, a very stylish, rich, rich person lives here. Uh, so again, do your best. Give me some details about the picture. Tell me about uh, what's happening. You know, what do you see? What are the things you can see in the photo? Tell me about the lifestyle of the person. Anything that comes out, you can explain it to us, and then we can throw it back out, and you guys can learn from it as well. Uh, Jillian says, can, can you ask Smart to bring Josh back, please? I'll do my best, Jillian. I'll get on that. I'll ask about Josh and where, where he's hiding. We'll, we'll pull him out and bring him back. Uh, so water is very beautiful. Yeah, I guess that's a swimming pool or some kind of, oh, what is that? It's uh, maybe, maybe, let me just add something here. So th it looks like the water looks like a man, man-made pool pool or pond. I'll give you a couple new words here. So a pond we usually use to talk about like a small area of water, maybe some frogs in there, right? Like, you know, maybe a park has a small, a small pond, a small amount of water in one area of the park. And man-made, of course, is made by man. I don't know, we should have person-made by now, but unfortunately it's still, we still use this word, it's man-made. Uh, what else we got? This is Lady Gaga's house. Yeah, maybe Eduardo, you could be right about that. Uh, the house is composed. That house is composed by a hardworking combination. Hmm. Maybe follow. I'm not sure what you mean. The compo composed, yes, yeah, I agree. Uh, don't use the U in your composed. And usually when we use composed, we use uh, composed of uh, something. So maybe just change your preposition from by to of. Uh, what else we got? Jazem says the couch is in the middle of the pool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and what is this whole thing around there? Oh, I don't even. I wouldn't even know how to explain it. It's a uh, it's an area there. Yeah. Okay, I'll stick with your answer. Sounds good. Uh, it's a place where you can relax. I would like to be there with a bottle of champagne. Me too. Absolutely, Gabriella. You hit it. You hit it on the head. Bottle of champagne, chilling by the fire. That sounds awesome. And this landscape has a very high price tag. I agree. Uh, round shaped sitting area. Oh, nice, nice combination. Round shaped sitting area surrounding water. Surrounded by water. Karam, just change that one little thing. Surrounded by. Because it's a, it would be a relative clause, which is surrounded by. So keep that there. And Julian says pillows, which I think Julian wants to say pillows with a with a I. But you you got you got it, Julian. You're pretty right. All right. So there we go. So what I think we can do with the last little bit, I would like you guys to to think about your home, think about your room, think about your city, think about your neighborhood. Um, and I think I think we'll try to keep it on the topic of housing. And so all these words that we learned here. Sweet, tenant, transportation, unfurnished, utilities. So if, if you've learned something from these ones and you say, okay, there's a few new words here that I haven't used before or, or I don't use very much, I would like you to try to use those and make a sentence uh, and share it with us. But I would like you to talk about yourself. 
So let's go here. This is the last thing we're going to work on today. Uh, Karam, I think surrounded by water would probably be, because uh, you said round shape sitting area, which is surrounded by water. So it's a, it's a passive sentence, which is surrounded by water. So I think you would, exactly, surrounded by water. You got it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, your turn. I want you guys to tell me about your, your home. And you can write you know, one or two sentences using some of the vocab that we learned today. Think about your room. Think about your apartment. Think about your house. And use the vocabulary below. And when I say vocabulary, uh, don't say below. Use the vocabulary from today. Okay, and again, you know, use... Use anything, do some translating, use some words which you want to know how to say in English to describe uh, the space. So you can describe uh, the area. You could describe the area where you live, you could describe your house, you can describe anything you want, but try it. Maybe try to use some of the vocab that we worked on today. So take any of these words, and I want you to make some sentences about your place. For example, here. Uh, so maybe somebody says, I would die without my dishwasher. I'm so lazy and my hands, and ooh, I'm so lazy and my hands are so delicate that I can't wash dishes alone. I need a dishwasher. Um, I would like to add, I think I would die without my espresso machine. I have a very nice espresso machine and it's my baby. So if I lost that, I don't know what I would do. I'm, I'd probably go to a coffee shop. But I would like you guys to know. Uh, I would like to, no, let's try that again. I would like you guys to tell me a little bit about your place. Describe it for me. Describe the inside uh, using some of the words we did today. So let's see what we got here. Uh, no, no, no. So Julian says, uh, Karim's house is full of cooking. How do you know that, Julian? How do you know that about Karim? Oh, right, because he's the food guy. He's the foodie guy. Oh, I'm going to have to hit him up uh, for food. Uh, let's see here, uh, Hamza. Problems, Hamza. Let's l let's bring this sentence into the mix. Yeah, Hamza's having some problems right now. My landlord won't give me my deposit back. That's rough, Hamza. Um, check your contract. I think that's the best advice you can do. Make sure you know the law, and hopefully you signed a contract when you got it, and you should be able to get your deposit back. At least that's how kind of how it works over here. Uh, let's see what Paulo says. Paulo says my room is quite empty. Uh, let's well, let's just throw you into the chat, Paulo. Let's let's show you to the world here, because we can always get some good vocab from people who do this, right? Uh, so let's see what he says. So Paulo says my room is quite quiet. Okay, I think you wanted to use quite. Just going to change that. So quite empty. The furniture that I have is able to be given the minimum comfort, but the view could be better. Okay, I think I, I got what you're saying here. The furniture that I have is able to offer, I'm gonna just change give to offer, we might use that here, offer me uh, the minimum, so minimum, minimum, and sometimes after minimum we might use a preposition, so I'm just gonna add that preposition, minimum in comfort with an M, but the view could be better. Okay, so we got a little bit of contrast here. This is, it gives me this, but the view could be, the minimum cover by the view could be better. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Uh, Gabriella says, I live in, oh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, in an apartment with two bedrooms and two dogs. All right, Gabriella, awesome. Very nice. Just change to T-W-O. Only mistake. Everything else is awesome. Uh, Mona Lisa says, when you rent a house in Brazil, it generally comes unfurnished, so no, no furniture at all. In Pahana, you have to buy you, you even have to buy the sink. I'm just going to get you to change to even. Everything else is perfect. Uh, so you even have to buy the sink. That's kind of, that's tough, hey? That's a big, that's a bit of a pain, no? Sounds, sounds a little bit annoying. Uh, what else we got? Hamza, <laughs> Hamza's having so many problems today. I would like to throw my landlord from the balcony. Hamza, don't do it. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. You might not, you might not have a comfortable house to live in if you've done that, okay? So don't do it, Hamza. Just do something else. I don't know. Go, go get into a fight for somebody, but don't, don't throw your landlord off the street. Um, next one, what do we got here? Uh, let's see here. I need to add this one. Uh, I'm going to add this one in here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what we got here. One Alvis says, my house isn't big, so I'm just going to change the spelling there. But it is so comfortable. So in English, we use, I've seen this mistake twice now, we use the M instead of the N. 
Uh, I'm planning, double N there, just a little bit of spelling there, Alvis. Planning to buy. So whenever you have two verbs in English, you want to go plan to buy. Like to go, want to go. You always have that to in the middle. I'm, I'm planning to buy a new bed because, uh, because I have one uh, which is so hard, which is good uh, because I have one. So I'm just going to change that. And I'm just going to add this because in English, we need to add this, this which uh, most of the time. If you just have a verb, and you need the be verb as well before you use that adjective. But other than that, it was pretty good. Uh, what else we got here? Judah says, I'm, I'm old enough. I'm old enough, and this reason, for this reason, I'm going to change that a little bit, Judas. I'm old enough, and for this reason, I have a beautiful home full of extra features, uh, landscape, maybe, maybe a nice landscape or something like that. Landscape we usually use to talk about talk about the you know the view of the land. So uh, maybe you could say, or maybe you're talking about your landscape. I don't know. Okay, so maybe full of extra features. Maybe a nice landscape, a dishwasher, a dryer, three bedrooms, a den, and a community swimming pool. Killing it, Judas. That's awesome. Good for you. I I'll be living in a box in Vancouver. So uh, can I come visit you in Brazil? That would be awesome. Uh, Julian says, my stove is able to cook all of Kareem's decent food. Decent food. I think you could probably give him more props than that, Julian. I'm sure he cooks really good food. Uh, decent sounds like just kind of average, right? I'm sure he cooks awesome food. My room is red and quiet. Okay, cool. Very nice. Uh, Kareem says, last night uh, I saw an extremely, oh, I like this collocation. I saw an extremely mind-blowing house. My extremely crazy house extremely mind-blowing house yeah it works an extremely mind-blowing house which was an ivy which had maybe just which had which had ivy clad walls outside of the house and its back wall was clad and if you don't know clad uh, clad is similar to a has clad with ceramic tiles Karam, that does sound crazy where was this where did you see this place uh, Barbara says I live in a wooden house in, Cas in uh, Cascavel Cascavel South of Brazil, there are four bedrooms and also a house for my dog outside. Oh, very nice. Um, we had a dog house when I was young, and the dog house actually looked like the other house. It was kind of cute. Uh, Sarah says, I'm surrounded by flowers. Good for you, Sarah. Flower power. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nina says, although my kitchen is small. So just add that is, Nina. Although my kitchen is small, it looks clean. Okay. Looks clean or is clean? A little bit of a difference there. Looks is just appearance, but is is like it's actually clean. Be careful with looks versus is. Uh, Jazem says, my room is so expand, it's green. It has so much furniture and it gets narrow. Jazem, I'm going to copy this one here because it's just a little change I want to make here. So my room is so expand. I don't think we would use this word, but we would use the word that we learned today. It was in the list. It's called spacious. And the opposite of spacious was cramped. So you can use this word. Uh, and I might just start a new sentence here. It's green, and, and let's connect that with and, it has so much furniture. Furniture is actually an uncountable thing. Uh, furniture would be the one big word, and then let's say you have sofas, and you have chairs, and you have uh, TV stands, right? This is all furniture. So the big category is furniture, and then you have all the little ones there. Uh, it has so much furniture, so it gets narrow. I might use that word we learned today as well, Jazem. I might use that word cramped. Narrow sounds like this, like rather than wide, it would be narrow. But if you say cramped, it sounds like you don't have a lot of space in your house. It's really cramped, like you have too much stuff and there's not a lot of space. Uh, Amanda says, uh, my house is crowded with old furniture that my mother-in-law, who lives with us, love the relative clo clause, loves to collect. So your mother-in-law is a hoarder, and we learned that word today. She's a hoarder. She collects a lot of things, so she's a squirrel. She hoards a lot of things and keeps it, and it, then eventually it's going to get cramped. Not sure if that's a good thing. Sometimes I guess it could be cool, but depends on what you like. And if you like a lot of stuff, it's great. If you don't, then maybe not so good. Uh, Julian says, although I have a big home, I'm single and live alone. Don't worry, Julian. A partner is coming maybe next weekend. I got a good sense for these things, and I feel like it's your time. You're going to you're gonna find someone very soon. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Eduardo says, I don't think I would live in a big house, so it's because it's more difficult to clean it out. I agree. It's so, it's so, and just to add the one thing, Eduardo, it's so much more difficult to clean out. Um, I think because you have the two and then you have the, your phrasal verb clean out, you don't, you don't actually need 
you might not need the it in there, but, uh, but that's good normally. That's a good position. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Manuelino says, I live in, I live, don't, and you don't need uh, in here, Manuelino, just uh, I live very near. Mm, I live very near, maybe the city, like the closest city. And my apartment has two bedrooms, beds with a B, and one kitchen with a T, and one living room, but I like it. Uh, one thing in English we always do is we always have to have, you know, a subject, I, and uh, usually, not always, but often an object. I like it so much. Uh, unfortunately, this is a little bit of a difference, I think, I think between Portuguese, because I've seen a lot of Portuguese speakers, they kind of just delete the subject. But unfortunately, we're not really supposed to do that in English. So try to keep that. Uh, but I like it so much because it is the best, the best, maybe not the last house. It is the best house, but not the last. Okay. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? Um, so crowded, crammed. Yeah, cr correct, Judith. Crowded would be crammed. You know what I mean? And, and you can see that a little bit, right? You see the CR. It's cramped. And then you see another word, and it's crammed. It's kind of similar. And sometimes it, it is really similar, right? Uh, so always look for those, those connections, a CR and a CRO and CRA. They might be a similar word, and often they tend to be. So keep it in mind. Um, next. Uh, the single story spacious and luxurious fully furnished and stylish furniture is being rented in the town. Very nice Bisma, very nice, very artistic. Uh, single story spacious and luxuriously home fully furnished, which is fully furnished with stylish furniture is being rented in the town. I think you they might th one thing you might have forgot Bisma is maybe some commas in there. The single story spacious and luxurious house. Maybe a comma like which fully furnished with stylish furniture comma again like one of those n those relative clauses where, where you kind of have extra information because otherwise it's just quite long maybe those commas could help break it up a little bit uh, Julian says oh so JB's given some advice here Julian good being 18 and single ha 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 there you go yeah there enjoy it enjoy it while it lasts uh, Karam says I live in a big house and it is located uh, at good surroundings at is not bad Karam I, I might use in I don't know why um, it's, it might just be an English thing you know at is usually general location and and you're right we do use located at good surroundings interesting located at both might be okay might be okay it's just it just for me it sounds a little bit more natural using in um, I have a little patio where I enjoy my weekend with my family with some tea and different junk foods in this situation, you can actually use foods because if you're talking about different types of junk f of foods, you can use S for foods. I know we don't usually teach it that way, but you can as well. And Mona Lisa says, I live next to the woods, so I'd love to have a balcony to contemplate the beautiful view from my apartment. Awesome. Very cool. And I think we're, we're pretty much on time here. So like I said, if you've gone through this, uh, you've been with us, uh, whenever you guys get a chance to, you know, I try to put up some sentences here. Whenever you get some new words from these or maybe from the other students in the class, man-made, pond, uh, some of these were really good, like a hoarder, right? So, you know, write these words down, copy them down, keep them with you and, you know, try to use them in the future, maybe some practice, maybe I know some people use diaries when they're writing every week, every week in English, so not a bad idea to do that. Um, yeah, and I mean stuff like this, like this is a really normal word we use, but most people don't know it. So if you learn something here, always write it down and kind of take notes of it. Um, but I think that's it. Does, if anyone doesn't else have any more sentences about this, oh, JB, of course you're a, okay, JB, let's do you first. Uh, JB says, I live in a somewhat, so in somewhat is like kind of, a kind of small house that is simple in design with the most basic amenities and in a middle class neighborhood. Well, JB, you've, you've, you've knocked it out of the park, buddy. That was awesome. And it was perfect. Uh, basic amenities, you know, simple things, right? Nothing, nothing expensive, maybe no swimming pool or anything like that. Just some basic stuff, regular stuff. Uh, awesome. Okay, and yeah, okay. So I think we're, we're about time here. If you guys have any more questions, as usual, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out in the chat. So if you have any questions about anything you wanna know about uh, some of the words we studied today or anything else uh, due to saying please say some idioms with house Ooh, okay it, no problem I, I, let's take a look off the top of my head I don't know if I can think of one so let's let's talk to Google never be afraid to talk to Google Google uh, idioms about 
home. Let's use home because home is more of a general word. So you can always learn something here. Uh, let's see here. So we got 20, 20 idioms about the house and the home. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot, right? And, and well, let's, see, let's see what they got here. Let me see if I can give you a few good ones. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to copy these. Well, you know what? <laughs> How many we got here? 20. 20 is not bad. Uh, these are all about houses, so I think this is what you want. So I'll just copy these here. And I think you guys, if I put it in here, you guys will be able to access it as well. So I'm putting this into your copy. So I think you'll be able to use this and get it. Or better yet, I could just give you the link. So the link is here. So, you know, you just go like that. Idioms about home, right? And you're going to get something on the internet which is going to have a lot of stuff for you. Uh, so let's see what they said here. Let's go through a few before we wrap it up. Okay, let me, while we're here, let me tell you the ones which I think are useful and maybe the ones which are not useful. Some of them, you know, some people might use them, some people might not. So I'm going to go, I'll use this list here and I'll tell you which ones I think are pretty good. Okay, so let's see, a home truth, an uncomfortable truth that you don't want to hear. I've never said that, I'll be honest with you. Uh, not that you couldn't say it, but I've just never said it, I've never really heard it. This one is good, this one here, number three is awesome. We use this one. Uh, so for example, for me, I lived in Australia for three years, and I lived in a place called Brisbane. And Brisbane, for me, is a home away from home. It's like my second home. And there you go. There's another one we use, uh, my second home. So you could say, um, you know, uh, Canada is my second home, or Brazil is my home away from home. Or maybe, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you live with a friend or a cousin or something, you say, it's kind of like your second home. So it's a home away from home. It's a place somewhere where you are as comfortable as you are in your own home. So it's like a second home. And you can say that as well. For me, Australia or Brisbane is a second home. Uh, comforts of home. I might just change that one. And I might just change it to comforts of home. I think this is a little more common way to say it. Mm -hmm. Julian's asking me, am I a gamer? A uh, little bit, Julian, not too much. I think a more shooter game. I've done some Halo in my time, but uh, not too much these days. Today's I'm working on Assassin's Creed. I'm out, I know I'm out of date, but I'm still working on it. Uh, home is where the heart is. This one's not bad. Um, it's an expression, you know, it's an idiom that we use in English, but we don't use it all the time. We don't speak like that. It kind of sounds like something from, from a book, or it's something, maybe it's a little bit older expression, so we don't use it all the time. Uh, what else could we, oh, this is good. This one's great. On the house, free. So if you go to a bar and, or a restaurant, and the, the bar or the restaurant is the house. So if the bartender or the waiter or waitress comes over and they say, oh yeah, it's, um, don't worry about this this meal or don't worry about this drink it's on, it is on the house that means it's free awesome uh, but you cannot say that to your friend only a restaurant or a bar could say that to you it's on the house safe as houses yeah no, no not sure about that one not sure I'd ever use that one close to home near an embarrassing or uncomfortable truth used to your remark um, maybe I'll modify this one hits close to home we might use this. We might say that um, if some bad situation happens, you might feel some connection to that bad situation. Like maybe it could happen to you or a similar situation. So sometimes we might use hits close to home. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll modify this a little bit. Uh, let me get up. Uh, hits close to home. Touches you. I'll say that touches your heart. In touches your heart in a similar way, maybe. Yeah. So if um, <laughs> if a bad, I can't explain it in another way really well. Google it. Um, but I think it just means if a bad situation happens to someone, and you really feel some connection to those feelings or the situation, it kind of hits close to home. It kind of like. You, you understand the feeling of that bad situation or of that person. Uh, bring someone home to something, mm, not bad. Drive something home uh, would be like to, let's say you're doing a presentation and you've been talking about something again and again and again and then finally you're gonna talk about it one more time just to drive it home. I think it's like a baseball expression. Um, 
I think that's why we might use it. Uh, what do we got here? What are you What are you saying over here, Julian? What's your, oh, he was talking to JB. Okay, all right. You guys got something else going on over here. Uh, all right, eat someone out of house and home? Nah, not really. I'm gonna skip that. Feel homesick? Yes, we use this one. Uh, a lot of students come to Vancouver. They spend you know a couple months here, and they haven't been away from their family for a long time. Uh, they feel homesick. Okay, so they want to go home. You feel homesick. This one's funny. Uh, I asked another teacher in my school, do you say this? And he said, yes, I said this. Would I ever say this? No, I would never say they get on like a house on fire, but it means you get along very well. I would just say we get along. Uh, we get along really well, but I wouldn't say that. But you could say that. We get on like a house on fire. Um, <laughs> give house room to, no. Hit home, no. No. Yes. This one. This is good. Make yourself at home. You come to my house. Um, my house is your house, right? I'm sure you have this expression in, in Portuguese or Spanish. or Probably everybody has this expression, right? Make yourself at home means your house. Uh, sorry, my house is your house. Make yourself at home. Act. This is, imagine this is your house, right? Make yourself at home. And those, those, I say, would probably be the most common ones we use in English to talk about. Playhouse is for kids. Um, this one you could use as well. Kids like to play house. Uh, one kid pretends they're the mother, or one kid pretends they're the father, or something like that. They they pretend to be a family. Uh, kids do this a lot. They play they play and they play house, or they play something else. They play doctor. Uh, you know, play something. Okay, so you can use that as well. Okay, um, so if you guys don't have any questions, uh, we'll probably wrap it up there. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I hope you guys are finding it useful, getting some good vocabulary from here as well. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm going to hang out in the chat for a bit if you guys have any questions, you want to know anything more. But I hope you guys are liking it. Please give me some feedback if you feel like there's something I can do to improve the lesson or something I'm doing well. Please let me know if something is good or if something could be a little bit better uh, You know, once we're done kind of the chat and everything. I uh, hope you guys found that all useful, all this stuff. That was a great idea, actually. Um, thank you for leading me to that because, yeah, we're talking about housing, so why don't we look at some, some idioms about housing? I'm, I'm going to totally use that next time uh, because it's good to know these idioms. These are things that people, uh, people look at, people use all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll have a chat with you guys once we're done. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, goodbye, everybody from the Brazil side. Goodbye, everybody from the rest of the world. I hope you guys had a great one. And we'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. Keep it smart, uh, keep learning, keep studying, and uh, have a great week, and we'll see you guys next time. See you later.